Welcome back to Family Tanks. A place for families to learn about interesting pets and to appreciate nature. So this is Lucius, our snake here. I'm Zosha. And I'm Scott. And today we're going to talk about the do's and don'ts of giving a pet for a present. Mm -hmm. So it's the holiday season and holiday lots of people are buying presents for their loved ones or their kids or their brothers or their sisters or their uncles or their dogs or their cousins, nephews, first cousins, snakes, uncle. I think we know. Okay, but the point being is we're all given lots of gifts and one of the most rewarding and wonderful gifts that you can give somebody is the, the lifelong bond and all the years and, and fascination you can get from having a pet. Mm -hmm. However, there's a right way and a wrong way to give pets as presents, and we're going to talk about that today. So the first thing that you should know as far as a don't in terms of getting a pet for a gift is don't bring an animal into the house that has any likelihood of having to be rehomed. So what I mean by that is it's better not to have the gift, the giving season, be the reason why there's a pet coming into the house. That reason should be there already, and the whole house should be on board with it, right? Yes. Um, if you say, oh, I want to give a gift, this person's really going to love snakes. I know that, so I'll just get them a snake. They don't expect it. Mm, maybe they don't end up liking a snake, or maybe they don't end up uh, being able to take care of it right, and then you're stuck having to rehome the animal. It's not good for the animal, it's not good for you, and it's better avoided. Mm -hmm. So always make sure that there's already a good reason to have that animal in the house before you choose to utilize the gift giving season as a reason to get it. Yes. Right, what's the second reason, or I should say the second don't for giving a gift of an animal? Don't assume like specific types of animals. Yep, she brings up a great point. Like so, here's an example. So let's just say we're going, you want your friend wants a ball python, but you see like all these morphs, like the paw bald, pie bald. Pie bald, <laughs> yes. yeah, we got it. And then, but like, don't make, let's just say they want to choose their own. They want to get like a regular or a different type. So don't assume the type or color and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Whoever wants an animal as a pet oh. is probably very specific as to which animal they want. They've probably already done some research and they probably are know, already know what they want. And it's better not to assume you know the specific one. So if I told Zosha, boy, I really want to get more dart frogs. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking, you're thinking about getting me a dart frog for Christmas. Yes. It's hard for her to assume she knows which one of the dozens of species right. available and that I want. Or... And is it going to be the right one? Is it from the right place? Pet keepers tend to be particular. So it's better not to assume you know which one they want. The uh, third don't that we want to cover in terms of bringing pets into your family in by way of a gift is it's better not to ever get the livestock if you can help it from your big box retailers. Yes. Um, well, some can be okay. We certainly don't want to say it's never okay. Generally speaking, the Bible animals, dry goods there. yeah, the animals are not of the highest quality and they don't um, necessarily have the best care all the time. Now, like I said, there are exceptions to that rule, yes. but generally speaking, you want to get animals from a reputable place. So for instance, Zosha, where did we get Lucius here? Uh, we got him from the Maryland Reptile Show. Yep, exactly. We went to a breeder right here in the state of Maryland where we are, and he knows the snake well, he knows how it was eating, he hatched it himself, and uh, we know we have a high quality, healthy animal. Yes. And that's always the best way anytime you're bringing any live animals into your life as a form of a pet, mm -hmm. right? And then what's the last don't for giving um, gifts? Don't put the actual pet under your tree. Yes, don't actually put the animal under the tree. The simple fact is, is it's extremely difficult to do that in a way which is good for the animal and doesn't cause a lot of stress on everybody. Now, what can you do instead? Well, that goes into the do's. Yep. What do you do instead of putting the animal um, under the tree? One way you can do it is get like a uh, empty, let's just say you want a fish. You're getting a fish. Get like a net, um, a tank. Oh, and, like accessories. And like wrap it. And like that's an opening still, but it's not actual animal. That is a great suggestion. So you give the accessories that go with the animal. So let's say you have a child that wants a pet snake or a pet turtle or something like that. And you've decided that you are okay with that. You're going to give them that gift. Instead of giving them the turtle, give them the aquarium and the filter and the light 
and accessories and a book about turtles and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. And wrap that up so there's plenty to unwrap for the excitement of the day and then a gift certificate for the actual animal itself, right? I think you wanted to do already. That's our next to do, isn't it? So yes, do give gift certificates. They're yes. great for these kind of things. Mm -hmm. I know you have some great ideas about how you could do a gift certificate yes. for a pet. Yes, so you can go to like, I'm not sure what website, but you can design a little certificate, customize it, put a little snake maybe if you want a snake. Mm -hmm. You have earned a snake. And that is just as exciting. The anticipation is sometimes some of the greatest parts, right? Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to give a gift certificate that's customized for the animal, just like Zosha said. And that way you have all the excitement without having the complication of having the animal there on Christmas morning or Hanukkah morning or, you know, a birthday or whatever the case may be, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I had mentioned this a little earlier, but yes. another important thing is you give the gift of knowledge. Yes. Definitely do give knowledge. So books, um, specific videos, things that you can get and give the person that gives them knowledge about the animal they're gonna keep, not only gets them excited, but also gets them prepared and fully understanding the animal before it comes in the house. Yes, this is actually, before we got him, it wasn't a gift really. Okay, so it kind of was a gift. It was a gift, kind of. But like, but um, just because I love you, kiddo. Yeah, but like, um, we, I had to research all of this stuff about keeping ball pythons. That's right, and she gave me a full report on ball python care Food, before we went out and got it. All this stuff. No, I've kept them already in the past, but the important thing is that you understood how they work. And now look at her, she's a snake expert. Snake expert. So that is definitely a way to go. Now another do for giving a gift um, of an animal of some sort is do discuss with your household, your whole household, what you plan to do ahead of time, right? Yes. Except for maybe the person who's giving it a surprise. Yes, yes, well, okay, correct, yeah. Except maybe the person who's gonna be surprised. But make sure that mom and dad and brothers and sisters and uncles and grandma and everybody is aware of what's coming into the house mm -hmm. for sake of allergies or, per you know, sometimes people have very specific fears. And while I'd like to work with everybody and make sure that nobody's afraid of anything, like Zoshi here is obviously terrified of her snake. <gasps> but the truth is, is you need to make sure that the whole household is on board. And this actually relates to our first don't. Because if you don't check with everybody, you may be in a situation where you have an animal that might have to end up being rehomed. And of yeah. course we want to avoid that, right? And then what is the last do for bringing or having an animal as a gift? Um, be prepared before you bring it to your home, which is kind of like getting a care book or something like that. Mm -hmm. Get the information, be prepared, research and all that. Absolutely, it's super important to be prepared before this happens. Now this goes for snakes, fish, lizards, dogs, cats, wildebeest, turkeys, whatever it is that the person wants as a pet. Yeah, I want a pet wildebeest. Can you get me that for Christmas? I'll think about it. We're gonna work on that. But the point is you gotta be prepared. You have to be prepared. Because once the animal is in your home, it's definitely not the right time to then get prepared. Um, it's, it's, some animals have relatively simple needs and it's not that hard to prepare in relatively short order. Others take a long time. So for instance, our dart frog vivarium here. So two months. This ran for two months before we got frogs because we had to let the plants grow in and the microfauna to uh, populate the uh, vivarium and things like that. And that takes a long time. Fish tanks take a long time too, don't they? Yes, but actually the opposite. We did the prepared Lucius's tanks the night before. Yeah, that only takes about 30 minutes to repair, assuming you have all the stuff. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, be prepared before they, uh, you know, before you bring any animal into the home. Mm -hmm. So that is our list of do's and don'ts and best practices when you want to give the gift of a pet in nature. Mm -hmm. So we want to hear from you. Put in the comments anything that you think we might have missed. And then what's the most important thing you'd like to tell everybody? Make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps our channel grow so much. Yes, please subscribe please. so you can see more updates and look forward to some more animal updates, more updates on little Lucius here. Please subscribe. More updates on Petunia and Vernon, our dart frogs, our live planted aquarium. And all the soon-to-be tanks all on this rack. Exactly. We're going to do a desert vivarium. We have a hexagon tank. All of this new to come. A saltwater reef, a hexagon tank, and um, lots of good stuff coming up. So we'll mm -hmm. see you then, okay? Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.